All right, guys. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a little demo today on um, building with Stanford's themes. A lot of you were just here, so I'm probably going to skip through some of the slides that are for others, but I'll maybe go real quick so that it, people are who weren't here in the last session get a little overview. All right, Stanford's Drupal themes. We've been through this in the last session. Mobile, responsive, centrally maintained, accessible, standards compliant, and Stanford branded. You can go to drupalthemes.stanford to find out information about them, learn how to download them or request them. For individuals, we have these non-Stanford branded themes, so Open Framework and Stanford Basic. As of Tuesday evening, um, Open Framework will be available to everyone on Stanford sites. Um, and then we have Stanford branded themes, which are available for um, official university groups and departments. We've got our two base themes, Open Framework and Stanford Framework. Open Framework is the one that Stanford Framework is based on. Open Framework provides the responsive styles and um, kind of a base, kind of everything you need to get started. Stanford Framework gives you that Stanford branding and the look and feel of Stanford. And again, we've got Stanford theme stack at the bottom, Twitter Bootstrap. Next is Open Framework, then Stanford Framework, and then Subthemes. And this stack of themes is interchangeable. So Stanford Modern, unfortunately, is not part of this um, stack yet. Uh, it might be something we are releasing soon, but for now, uh, we have some other themes. So the first thing we need to do in order to build a website using our themes is get to know our base theme, because that provides all the default styles, and we can build and use on all those styles in our subthemes. So this is Open Framework. There's a few things that we just need to know in order to use Open Framework to its fullest. Um, these are the, the special block regions that we have. Uh, also some tactics for using blocks and spans, which Brian mentioned a little bit, but I'll go into a demo on how to actually use those. Um, and the responsive behaviors and breakpoints, so understanding what happens at every breakpoint. And then there's one little thing uh, with the layout, which is the search box, and I'll go through that too. In addition to the layout, we have a site architecture. Some strategies that we're going to cover with that are the menu system, so how to build a drop-down menu in your top menu bar, and um, how to put menus in your fat footer. A lot of people use, maybe this is not an appropriate term, but we, that's what we call it. It's that big footer at the bottom that has a bunch of extra links and stuff. And um, we found that people often want like a, a logo from their school, plus a menu, plus a little bit of text about their department or you know there's all sorts of stuff people want in that footer area so we'll talk about how to kind of build menus and um, additional things in that footer area and I'm also going to go over a special region that we have in our theme called the admin shortcuts region for styles and icons uh, I'm going to briefly touch on some of the custom styles that are available in open framework and styles that are available from the Twitter bootstrap base. I'm also going to talk about Font Awesome just a little bit so you can kind of get a taste for how awesome Font Awesome is. And to do this, we're going to use several modules. So Context, um, Context is a module that lets you place blocks based on rules. So I can say, if you belong to this section of the site, then place a block. If you are happening within this date range, place a block. If, um, if you're a certain role, place a block. So context lets you do some really really fun, complex blocks, block placement. And you don't have to edit each block. You can do kind of bulk block editing in context. Context Respect is a module that lets you both use context and the normal blocks configuration system. So let's say someone accidentally edited it in both places. Context Respect respects both things. And I can't remember which one it gives preference to. I think it's the block system. Um, block class is a module we use all the time. Uh, this lets you stick a custom class on a block, and we love it, and I'll show you how it's used. Uh, views, of course, uh, lets you create some cool little uh, micro layouts in your blocks. And CSS Injector lets you override some styles. And Bean is a very cool thing, and it's coming to Stanford sites very soon, actually, um, which lets you do uh, fieldable blocks. So these are custom block types. So you can have a, a block that has, for example, uh, social media links. And that's what the block type is. And it's like five fields with different social media links. So you can have really custom little blocks that you make. So let's talk about layout and responsive flow a little bit. Um, I'm just going to quickly go back to my Open Framework demo page. Oops, that's it. Just to show you some of the regions. So here are all the regions that are available in Open Framework. 
And this is a, a lot, and the reason we have a lot is because we want it to be really easy for people to drop blocks in and have them behave in a certain way. So as I squish the page here, you'll see the blocks kind of change and move around, and there's a bunch of different breakpoints here. I think there are five breakpoints. And what we're trying to do is we're trying not to squish the blocks too much at any breakpoint. Break so in these default regions where the blocks behave certain ways, we just don't want them to get squished at a certain breakpoint. Instead, we want them to either move around or resize or reorder. So we can see the first or the second sidebar drops down at that breakpoint, and at this breakpoint here, most of the blocks go to fill 50% of the page, so they're stretching a little bit. We get a kind of a two-column layout. And when we get down to like a mobile phone type of screen size, things stack into one single column. So everything's always legible um, at every breakpoint. So this is a little diagram of those regions that I just showed you, the special regions. Um, what we have is kind of three, three color-coded regions here. Uh, I've got these ones up here, these gray ones. I'm going to call these just basic regions. If you drag a block into one of these regions, it will fill the 100% of the width and it'll, they'll just stack vertically. So this behaves kind of like normal, like you'd expect in a block region. Then we have what we call flow regions, which are the green ones here. And I'm sorry if the colors aren't showing very well. Um, we have a two-column flow region, a three-column flow region, and a four-column flow region. If you drop a block into one of these regions, it will be forced to be um, the size of the first column in that region. So let's say I drop two, col two blocks into this region, they're going to stack in two columns. If I drop one block into this region, it will be the size of this first block here. So it's, it's forcing the blocks to fit into those um, two columns proportionally. And then the orange regions here are what we call stacked regions. Um, these force blocks not to line up equally vertically, but um, kind of side by side. So like an editorial style on a newspaper, if you wanted that kind of style. So if you drop blocks into the stacked region, they're going to stack vertically, but the height of them, they won't line up at the top. If you want blocks to line up at each row, you want to use the flow region here. So let's say I have a website I want to build. So here's my site. Um, I, this is how I work. I wireframe on the whiteboard, and I go, yeah, I want, I want this website. So uh, how do I do it? How do I build this in our theme? Um, what I really want to be doing is mapping different parts of my page to the different regions that behave a certain way in the theme. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, oh, yeah, this, um, where's my mouse? Here we go. Uh, this image and this little about us kind of mission block, these map pretty well to this kind of two-column stacked region. And next, I've got these three blocks. I want to force them to be in three columns. I'll just use this region here that, that when you drop blocks in, it makes three columns. And lastly, I've got my footer here. I've got an about us and some affiliated links in the footer. I'm going to use, since this is, uh, I don't see anything over here that proportionally maps, I'm going to use one of these kind of basic regions, and I'm going to do an, a span override in that region to get this layout. So this is, um, this is what happens in, uh, when I'm working on a client site. I take each page comp and I say, we're going to use these different regions for these different uh, layouts. The next thing to kind of understand and just have in your mind, we do have five breakpoints built into the themes. The purpose of these breakpoints is to not squish the blocks too much at every breakpoint. Um, if you want to add additional code either to your sub-theme or to a CSS injector file to change the way something behaves at a certain breakpoint, all you need is this code here, example I have at the bottom. Um, this is a media query that you can write, and you can put this in a CSS injector rule uh, if you're on Stanford sites, or you can put this in your sub-theme. And you can kind of override how something will behave at a certain breakpoint. So I just wanted to throw this up here. If you are doing any sort of theming or wanting to override some of the behaviors, you can use these breakpoints to do that. So we really want to be thinking about what does this look like on my phone. And it's something that you know people still are not um, intuitively thinking about or always thinking about when they start a website. Uh, often we'll get comps and they're always in desktop. We don't really get a comp in mobile. Um, and the reason that is, is because it's really hard in Photoshop or in Illustrator to make five different comps at each breakpoint. It's just really hard. And designers, we just don't want to repeat ourselves five times. So what, what we're seeing more and more in um, a lot of web shops 
is prototyping in the browser, where you might have um, a, one comp that you're referring to to add in the styles, but then you're going to see stuff in the browser, and it's just going to behave the way you're, you're going to be developing those behaviors in the browser. Um, but when I'm sitting here at the whiteboard, I actually do want to think, at least for my layout reasons, to figure out what content goes where, so that when I'm in mobile, I have the important content at the top. So when I load up my on my phone, I see the thing that's most important, so I don't have to scroll down. So in this case, um, what's going to happen is because of the way Open Framework and the regions behave, um, we're going to get a very specific order with this specific layout. So I just wanted to show that, and this is something that you want to play with a little bit on the Open Framework website. If you go to the demo page, you know, play around and keep an eye on the region that you're thinking of putting your box in, see how they reorder on the page. This is not something that you can customize using our themes. Instead, we we want you to think creatively about using the block regions to achieve your goals. So use the right region to get your content to go in the right order. So in this case, I've just kind of overlaid um, you know, numbers over my areas on my page in the order that you're seeing them in mobile. So this is just something to think about. We do have a tool, and if I open up um, Open Framework again, I'll just show you this real quick. Oh, I have to go back here. Why doesn't our menu appear on that page? <laughs> um, if you go to the homepage blocks demo under demos, um, you can show the block numbers. This is something we're interested in putting in as a in the theme as a theme option, so you could turn on block numbers as a thing. Um, and what this does is for content editors or site builders, it kind of gives them a visual of that's the mobile order of your blocks. When you get down to mobile, you're going to see the menu and this stuff first. You're going to see this big banner next. You're going to see the About Us block, etc. So um, this kind of helps people understand what's going to happen when I bump down. So on mobile, the menu turns into this um, mobile kind of collapsed menu here. Menu drawer, is that what we call it? The menu drawer. The hamburger button. Some people, we argue, is it a hamburger or a hot dog? I don't know. Um, so you can play with this just to kind of get a sense of that order, and you can go to the regions overview page, and you can see each region name here, header, navigation, main top, main upper, highlighted, kelp, etc. Here's all those flow regions down here, two column flow, two column stacked, three column flow, and so you can kind of watch what happens to your blocks and those regions um, on this page to get to know the way those blocks and regions behave. Yes, uh, openframework.stanford.edu, mm -hmm. and that's where we have all the documentation right now. We are moving a lot of it over here where all the themes are, uh, drupalthemes.stanford, so you can actually see a demo of all our different themes here. And we're going to be moving the style guide over and maybe some of these other demo pages over here so that you can see the demo in each theme. So you can load up, um, you know, I can load up Stanford Jordan and see the style guide in Stanford Jordan. So it's something we're working on. Um, all right, so, and I actually want to go back here. So this is really important. This is a step that gets overlooked a lot, and you want to really be thinking, let's say you are making a complex department homepage. You really want to think about what shows up first. You know, for students, often, more than not now, students are on their phones in class, not on their laptops. Um, you know, the smaller the devices, the easier it is to carry with you. So we really do, even for school websites, department websites, we need to be thinking about mobile, mobile first. So some other things to consider as you're site building with our themes. Um, the the drop-down behavior in the menu is unique, and there is one way that it happens in our themes. And um, I'll go through kind of how to make that happen and how it works. The search box placement is a special little thing that we just have to remember to do. And um, in this specific wireframe that I made, I'm going to put kind of color boxes around our three blocks there, the welcome, spotlight, quick links. I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, the proportions of the block widths in the footer. So these are kind of special, that's a special case that we didn't see mapped to that um, region's outline on that other page. So we're going to have to build that kind of custom. To do this, we're going to use context and we're going to use block class. So, let's build it. All right, live demo people, so be kind. All right, so here's my website. Woo! It's done. No. Um, I made a bunch of pages. They're blank. Um, we're going to be working on the homepage here. 
And I've also made a bunch of blocks already. So um, what I wanted to show you first is context. Context is really cool. And <laughs> do I not have it enabled? <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be great. I might have to jump to a different website. Okay. Oh, is it installed? Yeah, it is. Oop. Really? Oh, uh, sorry, guys. Yay! <laughs> is it one of these I need? UI. Yeah, thank you. I knew it's one of these. Okay. Once we enable context and context UI from the modules page, we're going to have context available to us. <laughs> so the other modules that I've enabled are block class um, for this exercise. And as that saves. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you real quick here. Um, this demo page shows, so this is one of those basic regions, and I've made a custom, or Brian built this custom layout here in this region by using these things called span overrides. This comes from Twitter Bootstrap. What this means is we're dealing with, inside each region, 12 columns. So think of it as you've got 12 divided areas, right? And when you want it to fill the full width, you're going to say span all 12 columns. If you want it to fill half of the width, you say span six columns. Etc. So here we're seeing um, these two blocks span 6, span 12, span 6, span 6. So if I want that footer where I've got one longer block and one shorter block, I actually have to do something like this, where I have span 8 and span 4. So that's what we're going to um, use to kind of create that footer arrangement. And let me see if my module is enabled now. Yay! All right. So once you've enabled context and context UI, we get to this page. Um, we're going to add a new context. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this one um, homepage. Actually, I'll, we'll do the footer first. I'll call it site-wide site -wide context. OK. This is where things get really cool. So here, in my conditions, I'm going to do, well, this one's great. This one has a context just for me. But I can choose path. I can choose by taxonomy, user role, page. So it's basically if this, do that. So I'm going to say if, if it's site-wide, and I'm going to say it's always active across my whole site, then I'm going to add blocks. So this is pretty cool. And what I'm, what I'm seeing here, these are all my regions. Now, the reason to have this page open is so you know where all those regions are. It's kind of um, not, context is not as user-friendly as we'd like it to be. Um, it's, and especially with something like Open Framework where you have a ton of regions, this list gets pretty long. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find our blocks over here and we're going to add them to the region that we want. And I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint so we can look at this wireframe again. So here I've got an About Us block and an Affiliated Links block. I'm going to add these to the footer and I want this everywhere in my website. So that's what we're going to work on right now. So I'm going to add About Us and I think my other one's a menu. Here we go. Menu to my footer region. And you can show the row weights or you can drag and drop um, to get these to order in the right way. And I want to make sure my affiliated links are second. So I'm going to make them heavier. And then I'm going to hit save. So that's our first context. And this is a site-wide context. So anything I put here is going to be everywhere. And let's go see what that looks like. I'm going to leave that page open so I can check it out. Woohoo! So I don't have the proportions that I want, right? So I'm going to open up each of these, because I have block class enabled. I'm going to open up the configuration page for each of these blocks. I'm just going to do one in the next window and then open this one here so we can do both at the same time. Configure block. And when you've got block class enabled, you have a little field here you can stick a, a class in. All right, so I've got both of these blocks. Let me find the block class section. Here we go. All right, so this is the About Us block, and I want that one to span this kind of span 8 to fill up my page. So I'm going to put on the About Us span 8 and hit Save. And on the other one, I'm going to do the math. 12 minus 8 is 4, so I'm going to do span 4 on the other one.
All right. Oh, yeah, it just reloaded for me. Great. So now we see these proportions. So this is a custom kind of proportional layout using span overrides in block class. So this is how we build a lot of our, um, a lot of our websites. All right. So the other thing I mentioned was the search box. It's not there by default. We just have to put it there. And I'm going to actually put that in my site-wide context. So I'm going to go in and edit my site-wide context. This is just a housekeeping thing that we have to do. And I'm not sure if we can enable this by default. But I'm just going to show it to you so you know how to do it if you are using our themes. There's a region for the search box. All you have to do is match up the search box to go there. Hopefully, at some point, we can fix this. So here's my search form. I'm going to stick it in my search box region and hit save. These are just little things. I just wanted to, since we're releasing the themes on Tuesday, I'm calling them out, even though we don't like them, you know. All right, so now we should see our search box. Another thing you will notice is sometimes by default, Drupal will not give everyone the permission to use the search box. So if you're like loading in different browsers and you're like, why do I see it when I'm logged in and why do I not see it when I'm not? It's because of the permissions page. So um, I'm pretty positive I haven't fixed that. So if, we, if you guys load this site, you won't see the search box. All right, so we, we've gotten our site-wide context. Now every page I go to is going to have my search box and my footer. Great. So we want to build this um, middle section now. So I'm going to use the, I'm going to make a home page context just for my home page that creates this block layout. So let's go do that. So I'm going to make a new context. I'm going to call it home page context. And I'm going to say path. And what's great is you can, um, you can use star to do any path beyond a certain point. So if you wanted a whole section of your site to have a certain set of blocks, you can do like section name star. Every path beyond that section will get the blocks. Um, you can also exclude things. So I love this about context. You can use the tilde. So if I wanted to do every page except for this one page, you can exclude the path using a tilde. So that's really nice. Um, and in this case, we're just going to use front for the home page. And we're going to add blocks as a reaction. So now I'm going to go grab my blocks. And I've got a couple blocks to add. So let's do the first one. I have a splash image. Oh, and I actually have, I'm going to add the splash image. I've made these blocks a certain way, so I'm going to add them um, in a way that might be counterintuitive. Adding the splash image to my two column stacked region. So let's go back here and look at that. That's this guy here. I'm adding my splash image to the first box here. And because I actually made two blocks, so maybe someone else built your site and you've got a couple of weird blocks that you need to add, I'm actually going to add those two blocks to stack here in the second column. And I'm sh showing this demo only because sometimes this happens. So I have mission and I have contact, I think. And I'm going to add that to the second block. So what's going to happen is my image is going to be on one side, and those other two blocks are going to stack next to that image. And I'm going to make sure that these are in the right order. Okay, so that took care of my splash image and the, the kind of uh, mission and a contact information. And now I want to use this, these uh, three column uh, blocks here. So I've got, what do I have? Welcome, Spotlight, and Quick Links. I've already made these blocks. And I'm going to drop them all into this three column flow region. And I'm just going to reorder them so that they're kind of in the way I want them to be. And I usually, context, there's sometimes a bug in context. So I always check my row weights um, to make sure they're in the right order. Okay. That's all we needed to do to build our homepage. So let's save it. Check it out. Here we go. Now, there are some things to think about when you're doing this kind of layout here. So maybe, you know, in certain breakpoints, this we might want to kind of override the behavior here in this breakpoint because maybe it's not working with our content just the right way. But when we get down to mobile, hey, it looks good. OK, let's cover a couple other things. So in our comp, well, I'm pretending this is a comp. <laughs> I have a drop down menu. So let's make that happen. I'm going to show you how to do drop down menus. We're going to move the people and the contact page under about. Some of this might be fundamental. I just want to make sure we cover all the bases here. So I've got these in my main menu. So I'm going to drag people and contact under about. 
and I'm going to save. And the thing to enable the drop-down menu is you need to edit the About menu link, and you need to say Show as Expanded. Otherwise, it's not going to give you the drop-down links. Now, there's a key thing that we're kind of missing here, which is once I do this, the About page that I made that's part of my menu is no longer a clickable link. Now, this is because in Open Framework, we, um, we decided to have, oops, where's my main menu, come back. We decided to have um, dropdowns not be on hover, they're on click. And this is because we want a really consistent user experience for mobile, which, and any touch device does not have a hover state. So there's no way to get to that hover menu without touching it. And if you have to touch it again to get to another page, we, we found that there's a lot of like error, you, either user error of clicking the wrong place or just things are not behaving quite right. So what we've ended up is we've kind of defaulted to touch behavior, touch behavior meaning click in this case. So drop down menus are on click. And what that means is if demos was a page, I can't get to that page anymore. So if I want an about page, what I need to do, oops, sorry. Um, if I want an about page, I need to get, um, mm -mm, where's my menu? This is my menu, sorry, save. I need to make an additional link that acts as the toggle link. So right now, this is actually a link to my about page. Maybe I actually want someone to be able to get there. So what I end up doing is I add an additional link. And this might go to, um, I want to show you an example on the new, the new undergrad site because they're dealing with this a lot. So like, for example, they have um, a bunch of stuff in programs, right? So if I click on one of these programs, you can see in the URL they have programs as a container slash boss. So they, we've actually made for them landing pages at each level here in case someone edits your URL. So if you want your site architecture to be nested and have those top level kind of container um, paths, which you might want, definitely. Uh, even though that link is not clickable in your menu, it is, you can get to it by editing the URL in your browser. So you got to at least think through that piece. And so what we usually do is we put a simple list on that page of all the things in, that are in the menu. So it's, you, the, either way you go, you kind of encounter some challenges. If you go with hover, you, you're dealing with inconsistent user experience on mobile. If you go with click, then you've got these kind of unused landing pages. So we've ended up opting into this version. So in the case of my website here, I might want an about kind of category, and then I might want an about us page. So right now I already have, um, sorry, I'm going to go back to my menu. I already have the about page. I'm going to actually use that, since I haven't put any content on it yet, I'm going to use that as my container for my section, about. That way it's about slash content us, about slash people. And I'm going to make a new page that's going to be called about us. And about us is going to be the first thing in that section. So this is a solution that we do a lot. And uh, I just wanted to make sure I called that out because it's a little, you got to think through that a little bit. So I'm going to nest this menu link inside the about section and give it a negative weight. Okay, so now what happens is, oops, I didn't give it the right weight, that's okay. Um, now I've got about us, people, and contact inside of a section called about. Just something to think about. It's a little, you, you know, site architecture. You got to do a little planning, <laughs> and that way, if um, if I actually go to, oh, I'll need to fix my menu paths. But if I had something like about slash about us on the about page, I might want to put links to those other three pages. If you don't want to nest stuff, then you don't have to worry too much about those empty landing pages. Um, but you do need to have an um, item in your menu that acts as that kind of header for that section. Okay. Let's see how close we're getting to this um, to this website. I think we've kind of accomplished um, all of that. So the next thing I wanted to go through with you is this thing called postcard styles. So I'm going to go through a, we've got mm, 20 minutes. I'm going to do a views rewrite um, with the news section to make a block that uses this cool postcard class. Let's hope this goes well. <laughs> 
All right, so postcard, we call it postcard because it's basically like image on the left, stuff on the right, and it kind of looks like a postcard where you have the address and the stuff you write. Um, what we've done is we've created some very easy classes that you can add to um, wrappers, and if you wrap the divs in a certain order, you're going to get this. This is, we just we don't want you to have to think about it. Just put the right class on, get your divs in the right place, and it's going to happen. So I've made some content here. I'll show you one of my pieces of content. All right, so here's a piece of content. I have three news items. Here's one. Cat plays keyboard in space. It's official. Mauser, the cat, has achieved space flight and knows how to play music. So I've got some news items. I want them to show up here on my news page. And I want them to show up with that image on the left, stuff on the right. So I'm going to go create a new view. I'm going to call this news view. I don't know. Give it a name. We're going to show content of article. And we'll show, yeah, newest first. That works fine. Um, in this case, because I'm using blocks and context, I'm actually going to create a block view of this by default. And uh, yeah, unformatted list, I want that of fields. So we're going to do a views rewrite. To do a views rewrite, we need fields. So fields let you grab all the elements from your news content type and put them in wherever you want. All right, so I'm going to continue. How many, am I totally going over people's heads? Have you made views before? Do we have a couple people who don't know what views are? OK, good. All right. Here we go. So right by default, it sticks in the titles. So what I want is image on the left, stuff on the right. So let's see if we can get there. So first I just need to add all my fields. All right, I'm going to add my image. I don't want a label for this. I just want my image. And um, I'm going to do like medium. And I'm going to link this image to its node. OK. Um, so let's just get all the fields in here and then I'll show you how to do the rewrite. Okay, so there's my image and my title. And I also want like the date of my news item because when you get on a news page, was it published? No, not published. It's like post date. And I don't want a label either. I just want the date. So I'm just going to choose the format that works for me. That's probably fine. I'm getting all the pieces I need for my puzzle. And then lastly, I'm going to want my, I just want content. Oh, can I just get body? There we go. Content body. And I'm going to trim this one because I, well, maybe I'll show the whole thing. It's not very long. Okay, format or default. You can also make this trim. So if you want just like the first sentence with a dot, dot, dot and a read more, you can do that too. I'm just going to show the whole thing. Okay, the first thing um, I'm going to do actually is add what we call a global text field. How many of you have done a views rewrite before? Ooh, okay, I'm showing you something new. All right, cool. So we're going to add this wonderful field called global text, global custom text. So if you search for global, you'll get this global custom text. And this field lets you just put in a bunch of stuff. It's great. You can use it to put in, like, to make up a kind of label or something that goes above each one. In this case, I'm actually going to use it to do what we call a rewrite of a view. I don't want a label. And here's what's really cool. You've got these things called replacement patterns. Think of these as variables for your fields. So if I stick in title, it's going to grab that content field title and put it in wherever I want it and wrap it in the way that I want. OK, so I've got all my fields. The key to this is you have to put this custom text at the bottom of the list to be able to see all the things you can access above it. So that's just one trick. If you've placed it at the top of the order, you're not going to see the things you want to rewrite. So you've got to put it down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the structure I need to do postcards. So let's go look at that in demos, postcard layouts. This is the structure I need to create. Two divs inside of one div with a class on it. Okay, so here's my code. I'm going to create this code in a views rewrite. All 
Oops, I'm sorry. I mean, there we go. <laughs> I hate typing in front of people. <laughs> okay, postcard left wrap. So I'm going to use this one that wraps around the image. Okay, I'm going to end my div. And inside this div, I want two other divs. And these don't have to have classes on them. You just need two of them. That's the key part of this plan. Okay. In the first div, I'm going to put my image. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab image. Stick that right there. Okay. In the next one, I'm going to put in the other fields I want. So in this case, I'm going to do, let's do title first. And then I want um, the date it was made. Okay, well, we're going to see if this works. I might have to put in some other parts. And then the body. What I love about views is it gives you a preview of what you're doing. So after we save this, we're going to look at it and see what happens. Okay, so here's that structure, that HTML structure. Div, class, postcard, left, wrap. And that's, oh, that's broken, Brian. <laughs> um, div, class, postcard, left, wrap. Now, this allows the text to wrap around the image, and that's what I want. And inside that, I have two other divs. There's one with the image, and there's one with the stuff, the other stuff. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, because I'm using my admin theme to preview my view, you're not going to see it correctly down here because this theme doesn't have the postcard styles. It's the open framework theme that does it. Now, look what's happening. We're getting twice of everything. This is not what we want. And also, um, because of the way these are being rendered, we probably need to put in a break or a div around one of these to get the force it to the next line. So my rewrite is um, missing some wrapper divs that we might need. So the first thing I'm going to do is go hide all of these fields because we're rewriting them down at the bottom. So we want to hide them at the top. Then they won't show up twice. So we can exclude from display all these fields. So once I exclude everything, I'm hiding everything except for my global custom text. I'm seeing everything in the right order down here. Um, I am going to go in and put a, a div around my... I'm not sure why it's not doing that, but that's okay. I'm actually going to put a class on this so you can see one more class that I use regularly that's in Open Framework, which is called Descriptor. Ugh. And Descriptor is a class we made up for things like um, location, time, date. It's like extra info on an event or something on a news item that you see. It's kind of like meta info like posted by Megan on this date. So this is a class. We thought this was kind of descriptive info about the things. We called it a descriptor. It's not, very, it's not a very descriptive name for a class, but that works for me. All right, so let's save our view and see what it looks like. your fingers. Okay, so we haven't placed our view anywhere. So I'm going to go back to context. I'm going to make a new context for my news page. Now we could have made a news page view, but I already have a news page. I just want to put this block on it. Um, news context. Add a condition. Uh, path. And I have my page called news already and I want to put a block on it. So I'm going to go down here and find my block that I just made. Where is it? I always forget where these are. View news. And I'm going to just stick this in the content body. Now if I wanted to make a more complex, like maybe on my news page I wanted like a slideshow of, of recent news at the top, I wanted my featured news block in the sidebar, I want my Twitter feed, Often these kind of pages get complicated. It's not just your list of news. So that's why we, I use context and blocks, because later if a client says, oh wait, I want my Twitter feed and my social media links and my this and my that on my news page, I can just go in and edit this context and put a few more blocks on there. So that's why I didn't make a, a page view. You can also add things to the page view based on path. Okay, so let's go look at our news page. And there we are. So um, 
these are some strategies that we use, uh, views, rewrites, to create these uh, postcard layouts, which are kind of fun. And you, these can get even smaller. So let's say you wanted like a little thumbnail on your homepage and this like events, you want like a little thumbnail for the event and then um, the event info, read more. Um, you can do that with these views as well. Okay, and um, you can see here, this is my descriptor class in action. And it just provides a, an alternate style here. And if we go to some of these other themes, you can see how that class looks different in, in our other themes. It's just usually a little smaller and we do all caps. Um, you can always override that to be whatever you want. We've just found it's really useful to have a different, either like a light gray or, you know, kind of have those bits of text that are like the date or who wrote it kind of thing um, be styled a little different from the actual node itself. So I think I'm kind of at my time. Uh, what we did in this uh, session is we used context to kind of place blocks on our homepage and site-wide. Placed the search box, we made a drop-down menu, and we made a views rewrite that uses the postcard class and allows us to have that um, fun little side-by-side, -side, which I already closed. Where is it? There it is. Side-by-side -side kind of style of image with stuff next to itself. So... Um, I just want to show you one more little trick. If you use uh, Firebug or Chrome developer tools, we can go check out how this is working, kind of dig in. And what if I, oh, I just want you know, the image to be on the right. So the great thing about our postcard classes, you just change it once, um, and the whole thing just switches for you. So we've got four of those styles. Um, two of them allow the text to wrap, and two of them make, force it to be kind of side by side so you don't get that wrapping effect. This is just such a common case that we find on like people pages where you have like staff photo stuff, um, et cetera. So we've tried to make it as easy as possible. All right, I have one more thing I just want to show you is just some resources uh, for going further. Uh, because we do base on Twitter Bootstrap, you can use all the themes and, or all the styles and classes from Twitter Bootstrap in your Drupal site. So um, some common ones that we use a lot are like button styles. They have a nice set of button styles that you can use. They also have um, this carousel and some other JavaScript things. They have an accordion, JavaScript accordion, which you might really be interested in if you want like expandable sections in your page. Um, and all you have to do is figure out how to write the code in the same way that Twitter Bootstrap is provi providing in their documentation. So just like we did that views rewrite to get the postcard to work, you can do a views rewrite to get carousel to work or to get an accordion to work. So this is a kind of strategy that um, allows us to take advantage of Twitter Bootstrap styles um, and many other components. And the other thing that we've added to Open Framework is Font Awesome, which is really, really awesome. <laughs> it is an icon font. And it lets you use um, icons in, in your site that are scalable. So these are vector, uh, vector graphic icons. Let me open it up. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, um, this is definitely moving forward in the web, especially with retina screen displays. We're going to see more and more of these vector-based um, graphics. And... They look good on Retina and on other screens because they render. They don't render as pixels. They render as um, vector shapes in the browser. So these are um, these are really fun. There's a ton of icons available to you. Again, you have to um, in a, you have to use it a certain way. So here it's showing you some examples down here, how to integrate it. And um, where's the example? Here we go. So you can add this kind of code to your site to get one of these icons to show up. So this is available in Open Frameworks. So if you're building and you want an icon on your page, you know, go check out Font Awesome. Font Awesome, grab the icon you want, stick it in, in your code, and, and you can use it. So just another fun thing that we've added in there. Um, I think that's all I had in my slides. Here's some resources. Again, um, we looked at Open Framework. We, uh, I didn't open up Bootstrap, but you can get to it through their GitHub. And um, Font Awesome, Drupal Themes at Stanford shows you all the different themes we have. And if you missed last uh, session, you can watch a video of the same presentation on uh, Tech Briefing. And I'll post these slides online after Drupal Camp. So yeah, uh, any questions? No?